Hi, my name is Jesse at Trash Panda, and eight months ago, we started the process of designing a brand new mid-range, and well. In part one of this series, we started by testing every single stable mid-range we could get our hands on and getting your opinion on what you like and don't like in mid-range. We then designed three variations and 3,000 of you voted on this one. And then we went full Adam and Jamie. <laughs> And then we went full Adam and Jamie and tested some of the most common disc design myths to see how dome, beads, and parting lines actually affect the flight of a disc. But we're not done yet, because over the last few months we had a mold made, and today we're gonna inject our very first mid-range. And hang on till the end of the video, because we're gonna talk about exactly when these are gonna be available to you. All right, let's go make a mid-range. Okay, so we have two things we need to talk about. How did it fly and when can you get one? And first up, it flew beautifully. In terms of flight numbers, I'd put it somewhere in that 02 to 03 range with the likes of like an Emac Truth, a Rock, and maybe an MD3. And its glide was absolutely perfect, but I am a little biased. I will say one interesting thing did come up and it's that if you remember from the second part of this series, the 3D printed prototype that was voted for offered both a slight turn and a slight fade, whereas the injection molded prototype was definitely more overstable. Now I'm making these in my garage and we went from a hard prototype to a soft one, so at the end of the day, there's definitely some room for a margin of variance. But I'm definitely curious if you have a theory as to why these fly different that I might just be missing, so let us know in the comments. But first, we've all been asking one question. When the heck is Trash Panda going to start selling discs? And will it be a putter or a mid-range? Well, the short answer is soon. But since our mission is focused on growing the sport sustainably and utilizing recycled plastics, it's been a somewhat complicated journey. Once we nailed down our putter design, which will be the first discs we bring to market, we started working on a mid-range design, which was this series. But we still had some major roadblocks in the way of making discs available to you. Actually, let's call them speed bumps. First, nailing down the best recycled plastic that works great as a disc, but that we can also source at scale has proven to be quite the challenge. But I think we figured that one out, so subscribe, because that video's coming. Second, just because we can make a couple good discs in my garage doesn't mean we can come even close to making enough for all of you. Thankfully, we've solved that one in partnership with a local manufacturer who makes our minis, but now we need a mold. Which leads to our third speed bump. Molds cost a lot. Thankfully, we were able to do all the prototyping with a $400 mold rather than a $40,000 one, but it's time to move on to the big leagues. And as we're crossing that final speed bump right now, I can't help but thank all of you who have bought a mini or some other merch, subscribed to the channel, shared a video with your friends, supported us on Patreon, and so much more. The only reason we've made it this far is because of you 
and that will only continue to be true. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to support the channel. Stay tuned because we've got some big things coming and we'll see you next time.